Um, I get the opportunity to talk a little bit about feed and cobrotic prices and those types of things. So let's just work through this. And I, uh, you should have a handout. If you don't have a handout, we can certainly have one made up and sent out to you if you leave your name and address. But I've got uh, a handout of the presentation. It's got a whole bunch of rations in it for later on that we'll talk about. Plus, I've got a handout on sources and prices for selected co-products in North Dakota. I've been collecting these for probably six, seven, eight years, and I just went back five years to look at the spot market. And in this picture is kind of a report of what corn, wheat mids, and distillers grains are all priced on a per ton basis over the years. You can kind of see they all kind of are pretty close. The, the lines are similar uh, within 10, 15, 20 bucks until you got to October 2010 up into 2011 and now you look at September of 2011 and everything's just gone haywire again. So what I, my point is, is what you thought used to be and always worked 10, 5, 6 years ago, 3 years ago is now changing again. It's time to revisit all these prices. Um, as you can see here, corn's always more expensive than wheat mints, right? Because corn's got more energy, right? Wheat mids have got some protein in it, they got some energy, but not near the energy as corn. But right now, wheat mids are selling for a higher price than what corn is. Why? Maybe it's the drought in Texas. I called the state mill and elevator and asked them where their demand is going to. They said regional, upper northwest. In other words, Minnesota, South Dakota, North Dakota, creep feed season. All their, There's a demand just in this region. So just when you think the drought has caused this price of wheat mids to go up, no. It's just us up here looking for feed, something other than corn, and it's driven up the price. Uh, distiller's grains is actually at a discount, but its energy content is fairly similar to corn. Uh, it's always time to revisit all these things. As you can see in the past, the two kind of mimic each other. Usually distiller's grains is priced about 100% the value of corn, or 90%. Get down in Nebraska, it's 110% the value of corn. Well, you can see now there's some changes here and it's actually less. So it's worthwhile to check feed prices and just don't get in the routine of doing one thing time after time. We produce a lot of different other feeds in North Dakota. Uh, 20 years ago, we didn't have near this amount of uh, feed stubs available to us in North Dakota. Now we've just got five ethanol plants located throughout the state. And they sell wet, modified, or dried distiller's grains. They also sell liquid feed called condensed distiller solubles. But most of them put that back onto the, onto the distiller's grains. And you really can't find any condensed distiller solubles in these new ethanol plants unless they make a mistake. So if they have a production problem, you can certainly buy their problem, but I'm not so sure you really want to have their problem in, at home with you. If it's priced cheap enough, you can afford it. Wheat middlings, there's five places in the state that mill wheat mids. Uh, barley malt sprouts, there's one place, and that's at Spearwood, North Dakota. Corn gluten feed. I had the question yesterday, the other day, where do you buy corn syrup? Well, I... If you're looking at putting caro syrup on your pancakes, you go to Wapaton because that's where they make true corn syrup. But they're referring to the trade name of condensed cellular solubles as being corn syrup. So we're really talking about two different feeds. But uh, the wet corn milling plant down at Wapaton produces a corn gluten feed that's being used widespread in, in that local region down there. And it's pretty tough to even get it up in our area. Potato byproducts, we've got two potato plants in North Dakota. Beet tailings, we've got lots of beet plants in the state if you're on the eastern side of the state or even on the western side. And we've got oil crushes in North Dakota. There's at least three permanent ones with another one that's working part-time. We just got an abundance of feed. Here's a kind of a map of North Dakota. And if you study it, you can see we've got five different ethanol plants. And we've got a bunch of wheat mid plants, some you probably never even heard about. That's why on this uh, one handout that says sources and prices for, collect for selected co-products in North Dakota. There's a listing of names and phone numbers and locations and I try to update it but you know it's business so things always keep changing but there's a lot of feed resources out in the state. Uh, out in Williams County you're probably the furthest away from a predominance of the feed. Um, even Ward County's away but once you get closer to that valley you can see that we've got a, an abundance of co-product feeds out here. Uh, that can be fed that most, for the most part, end up going into the cattle industry. That picture is distiller's grains. That's a real changer in the uh, industry over the past few years. 
Once you get it on your hands, you know it's what it's like. You know why cattle just go nuts for this particular feed. It's high in energy. It's all fiber, high in protein. You can discuss whether you want to feed it or not. But I need to explain just how much of that stuff we produce in the state. We've got five plants. One's a, one's a 30-year-old plant producing 15 million gallons of ethanol a year. We've got two newer ones producing 50 million gallons. We've got two other new ones. That's Hankinson and, and Castleton, Theraldson. And they're producing 100 million gallons of ethanol a year. So if you figure up how much ethanol, how much, uh, um, how much ethanol they produce, they produce 2.7, 2.8, they're getting more efficient now. That's about 167 million bush, bushels of, uh, excuse me, yeah, 167 million bushels of corn. Okay, so you take that bushels of corn, and of one bushel of corn, there's 18 to 19 pounds of distillers grains. So we're talking some really big numbers here. I think that's a trillion. And you boil it all down at the bottom of the page, it comes down to for every cow living in North Dakota, cow, not calves, just cows, we could feed them, we could feed 19 pounds of distillers grains to every cow for six months. And that would just use up the ethanol supplies in North Dakota. That wouldn't touch any of the other co-product supplies. So we got a lot of feed around. Gall goes out of state because somebody else buys it, which is okay, but if you're looking for feed, we got a lot more than what you probably give it credit for. Let's talk about some rations now. We gotta feed some animals. I always like to go through that little background during nutrition. Cows need water, energy, protein, vitamins, and minerals. What do they need? They need a combination of all of them. And if they're gonna gain, they need energy. If they're gonna convert that energy, you're doing rumen fermentation, they need to have protein in there as well as everything else. So you gotta feed them a little bit of everything. Now, when I go to feed energy, I always try to figure out the cost per pound of energy. I don't look at a cost per pound of feed, but instead the cost per pound of energy. And in this example, energy is called total digestible nutrients, or TDN. So to figure out the cost of TDN, you figure out the, the price of the feed, $165 a ton, and this 80% TDN on an as-fed basis. As -fed basis. You take that number and divide, and then you divide again. You don't multiply, you divide each time. Just remember, divide. And then when you get down to it, the cost per pound of TDN on that $165 a ton feed is 10 cents a pound. Now you can compare to the other feeds. Now that 80% was for as-fed. If you don't have the as-fed, and instead you got a handout, and we've got one here called Alternative Feeds, and in the back of that Alternative Feeds bulletin is a list of feed uh, uh, nutrient profiles those TDNs would be listed on an as on a dry matter basis. So then you need to use this calculation, which is just dividing one more time. You take the um, that line there that says cost per pound of TDN, 165 per ton, divided by 80% TDN, then divide it by 85. And you just do this for every feed that you have, and you can figure out what your cheapest source is. We'll go through some math here and see where it comes down to. Of course, like I said, what you need, you need the feed prices. Don't forget to include freight when you get the feed prices so you can compare everything to home. Convert it so they're all in the same thing, whether it's bushels to tons or to pounds, whatever, just comparing weights to weights. And then somewhere get the feed values for the feeds. Now I did three, now three examples here. One's canola mill, one's wheat mids, and one's corn grain. If we look at the price per ton, canola meal is 195, wheat mids 215, and corn grain was 205. That's when I did this example. Corn's now slipped 60 cents, but wheat mids will probably follow with that, maybe, maybe not. Canola meal, of all the times I've ever looked at it, for once we've got a feed source that's high in protein that's cheaper than corn. This is an anomaly. This is one thing that doesn't happen very often, but it's happening right now. Why? Soybean meal has gone down in price, and consequently all the rest of the protein products have gone down in price. So if your ration's short on protein, the protein sources are a nice thing to look at. I remember about 10 or 12 years ago, maybe 15, 18 years ago, we were adding one pound of soybean meal into finishing rations because soybean meal was cheap enough to afford the additional average daily gain you'd get off by giving just a little bit more soybean meal. But price comes into play. Well, you look at these prices and we can do the cost per pound. You can see it's one's nine cents, another one's 10 cents, another one's 10 cents. Look at the cost per pound of crude protein. 25 cents for canola meal, 62 cents for wheat mints, $1.20 for corn grain. Just what you expect. Energy sources are not cheap sources of protein. Protein sources are cheap sources of protein. Now, if you go to the very last column where it says cost per pound of TDN, canola meal at 15 cents a pound of energy, Wheat mids at 14 cents a pound of energy, corn grain at 13 cents a pound. 
Corn is still the cheapest source of energy. Wheat mids is not far behind, but canola mills down there priced where it's almost the same for energy value as what the corn would be. So as you look down through there, you just got to do the math because every year it just keeps changing. Okay. Feed efficiencies, I think John highlighted earlier, the more forage you put in the ration, the, po the, the lower the gain is going to be. If you pick up the corn you're going to, or grain, you're going to increase the average daily gain. That's just how these things usually work. So um, I would get some assumptions too. I used some prices. Corn at 88% TDN, price is 560 a bushel. Alfalfa hay is at 58. That's John's better quality hay at 80 bucks a ton. Grass hay, that's John's poorer quality hay at 60 bucks a ton. Wheat mids, 215. Barley mouth sprouts at 215. They have less energy, but they're still priced up there. So somebody likes them just really well. Um, the better deal would be wheat mids. Corn silage, I price that at $50 a ton. Boy, that's a good question. Where do you price corn silage at? Do you use what? Seven to eight times the price per bushel of corn, or do you use 10 times the price of bushel of corn? Um, a lot of different ways to try to figure out how you're going to price your corn silage at, but I use $50 a ton. I think people might say that's a pretty good price, especially when you used to pay only 20, 20 bucks a ton or 15 bucks a ton. Uh, canola meal at 190. Well, let's go through some examples of rations now. We're going to do a 575 pound steer. We've got three rations. Basically, we've got three slides here that all kind of deal with the same thing. Grass hay, we're giving the calf 18 pounds of grass hay at 52% TDN. He gains two thirds of a pound of gain. His feed conversion is 27 pounds of feed to one pound of gain. Cost of gain is 80 cents. You use a better quality hay, he gets a pound and a quarter. Feed conversion, 14 to 1. Better quality hay, cost to gain, 56 cents. Okay, if you're trying to make money on this deal, the cheaper cost goes where it goes. If you decide to use the grass hay but spike it up with a little bit of corn, then you got to add some canola meal in order to get some extra energy. Your gain's going to be 1.8. 10 pounds of feed per pound to gain. Ration cost is going to be 102, and the cost to gain is 50 cents. As you increase your gain, the cost of the gain is going down. Let's do a 660 weight calf. He eats a little bit more rather than 18 pounds of grass hay. He's eating 20 pounds. His average daily gain is a little bit more, not much. Feed conversions takes a little more feed to put on the same weight. Cost of gain, 84 cents. You look at the alfalfa hay and the grass hay. The gains all increase, not as much as the lightweight calf because those lightweight calves are more efficient than the heavier calves. But your cost of gain keeps going down as we increase the energy content of the ration. We get up here to a 750 pound calf. He's eating 22 pounds of hay, but he's not gaining anything. Still calves at $1.40 a pound. I guess that's still product pencil end. Um, alfalfa hay, just feeding that straight, it'd be 64 cents at a pound and a half. Add some more corn to it, down to around 60 cents. So there's the, basically the same ration for three different weight groups, and you can see how the cost of gain increases as the calf gets heavier. Okay. But the cost of gain also decreases as the, in, as the average daily gain gets better. Now here's some rations just for some 660 weight calves. We're going to use grass hay at 10 pounds, barley hay at 10 pounds. The energy content of the ration, I think in terms of TDN, if you're a nutritionist in the crowd, you might think in terms of NEG. So I've got both listed up there. Whichever one makes sense to you, I might just say TDN just to move along here. Here we're looking around. Almost two pounds a day gain with half grass hay, half barley sprouts. Ration cost 138, cost of gain 71 cents. Eh, it's kind of high. I mean, can we do better? Let's use grass hay, wheat mids, and limestone because wheat mids is high in phosphorus. We don't have enough lot of calcium in the ration. We gotta add limestone. TDN's now 70. Feed average daily gain is two and three quarters. Doing cost of gain 55 cents. Well, let's say we want to use grass hay and alfalfa hay and not use the limestone, just kind of do a mix and add 10 pounds of wheat mids. 2.6 average daily gain, 7 to 7, or almost 8 pounds of feed per pound of gain. Cost of gains of 55 cents. Okay, not bad. Let's look at some other examples. Favoring co-products and some decent quality feed. Here we stepped in a little uh, corn grain in with the wheat mids for a 70 TDN ration, 2.6. You can see the cost of gain was 54 cents. Go down to the bottom of your screen, you'll see some grass hay there at 4 pounds, alfalfa hay at 4 pounds, wheat mids at 6 pounds, and we spiked the grain up now at 6 pounds. You got a higher energy ration rather than 70 at 78. 
they're doing three pounds a day gain. The average, the feed conversion has gotten better and the cost of gain has got down to 50 cents. Now I want to back up into that middle one. This one really caught my eye when I did that rationale. Felfa hit seven pounds, corn silage as much as they want to eat. Doing about two and a half pounds a day gain. Is that going to get calves fat? Two and a half? Probably not. If it's a better quality corn silage, maybe they'll do 275, maybe they'll do three pounds, depending upon the value of the alfalfa hay that goes into it. Um, you know, it's all a matter of how good your corn silage is, but this one caught me back. This is $50 a ton corn silage, and its cost to gain was 43 cents. So I deredid the math saying, okay, maybe corn silage is $60 a ton. That put that up to about six cents more at 48 cents a pound, or 49 cents a pound cost to gain. Well, I made corn silage up to, what did I say, 50? Now it's up to $60 a ton. I raised it another six cents. I got it up to $70 a ton and raised that 43 up 18 cents. So what I'm getting at is, I'm not sure where this corn silage fits in there. It almost appears to be a cheap source of, of energy. Something to rethink now from what we've always done in the past. Usually we've always looked to go to the other way. Well, time to think about it a little bit differently maybe and think about that for the future. If you've got corn silage, maybe you're on the right track. If you don't have corn silage by now, it's just something to think about for the future. Here's another ration. Alfalfa hay at 13 pounds, corn grain at 7 pounds, 2.5 pounds a day gain, 49 cent cost to gain. More corn grain plus a protein supplement because you need some extra protein added in the ration. 54 cents or 55 cents cost to gain. Your feed conversions continue to get better. Here we got 13 pounds of grain, 5.5 pounds of alfalfa hay, 3.3 average daily gain. You do that for too many months and these calves are going to get kind of fleshy, but your cost to gain is really low. A lot of different rations to be looked at here, different ways to feed calves and do your own math. I provide this as an example of what you can kind of look at. Okay, I think I just changed rather than alfalfa hay, now I went to using grass hay and distiller's grains. Um, 15 pounds of grass hay, 5 pounds of distillers, 2 and 3, 2 and 2, excuse me, a pound and 2 thirds gain. Um, cost to gain is 56 cents. You go down there with grass hay and corn grain and distillers, we're at 48 cents. If you notice, look back through there and you'll see as you increase the corn grain and distillers grain, your ration cost goes down. And it seems to me that distillers grain rations are one of the cheaper ones, and that's because the price of distillers grains is discounted. There's a lot of energy in distillers grains. So this is dried. You could use wet. You just have to adjust the moisture content in your ration. Okay. So how do you get better average daily gain in calves? Like I said, you increase the amount of energy, whether you use a co-product or grain, balance the ration accordingly. You can buy other things to add into a ration to make them do better. Ionophores, Bovitec, Grumensin will improve feed efficiency in calves, and you can get 5 to 7% in feed improvement by doing that. Um, if it avoids coccidiosis in the group, that's probably worth more than what the Bovitec or Mensin costs in the first place, just avoid the coccidiosis. Now, if you've got a big outbreak, um, that's probably going to be a big deal, so you might have to use something different like Dequinake or Amprolium if they're really at high-risk calves. Um, implants, I know if you're going for the natural market, you don't really want to talk about implants, but implants will improve average daily gain, 5 to 7 pounds. You don't see 20 pounds of weight gain in a calf very easy. It just kind of disappears all over them. But if you look at implanting calves versus not implanting calves, that 20 pounds keeps coming up if you do a good job of implanting. In other words, don't let it get abscessed. Actually put it in the ear and not on the ground. All those little things that you think you do right, but if you ever go back and look at ears to see if you actually put the implant where you thought you did, you find out that you're about 70% effective and 30% you should just shoot up in the air and put it on the ground because you blew it. Yeah, that happened to me. And when you do the revaluations and see how good you are, you find out that I guess we can always be better. So don't give the person the ear, imp the, 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 the most experienced person working cattle should be running the implant gun, not the least experienced person. So the guy that, yeah, think about who you want to use, have that. Implants do work. For only a buck, 20 pounds of weight gain, it's a big deal. That's if there's no additional benefits for natural. And again, I just had to say again about coccidiosis. Um, in these newborn calves with stress, if they do, or these uh, newly weaned calves with stress, if they do have uh, coccidiosis, that'll just ruin your feed to gain in a group of calves. And if it's bad enough, it'll probably scar the intestine. So these calves will never gain very well throughout the whole feeding period. 
you really want to avoid even running into that issue, even if it means working them slow onto a diet and uh, enduring that lower average daily gain during the first month just to get calves to go. Well, um, let's just summarize a little bit and say feed prices, uh, they seem to keep relative to the corn price. Nothing's been really changed. Uh, corn's gone up, wheat mids have gone up, barley malt sprouts, hay's gone up too. The problem with hay, you can't haul it very far. <coughs> Uh, young animals have really good feed efficiencies, but they tend not to eat as much as bigger animals, so they need a more energy-dense diet to do as well. As you increase the energy density of the diet, gains go up, and it appears every time you do that, your cost of gain goes down, so um, look at that. Don't forget when you do feed prices, you've got to include transportation. The kick I always get out is when you're looking at uh, uh, beet pulp, and you get uh, 27 tons for the cost of freight, and it's $400 for to get them hauled in. And I go, great, did you know that stuff's 90% water? So you got 2.7 tons for 300 bucks. That's 100 bucks a ton. Hey, it's cheaper than that. Well, if you can't buy feed, it's good to keep somebody in, involved hauling feed. That's okay. So I offer to most people, if you don't believe me that wheat mids are that, uh, excuse me, that, bar, that uh, beet pulp is that wet, Let's take a sample and have it analyzed for moisture content so we can see what it is. And I've had some samples come back in that are 50% dry matter, and I've had them come in that are 90% dry matter, 90% water. So obviously, getting 13 tons of feed for $400, 13 tons of dry feed at 50% dry matter, that's a hell of a bargain. So you just got to know what you're doing and expect what you get, and yeah, things can happen. Distillers greens can look wet, it can look dry. Uh, it can change too. Um, with that, I think I'll just summarize and say uh, appears there are some changes in the industry when it comes to prices and now we just have to look at, at things like grinding grain too that can come to an advantage to improve your feed efficiencies. All those things at one time that you probably just kind of said, well, we'll just do it this way because it's probably cost effective that way. It's time to rethink those with the high price of corn.